All right, guys, today is question answer day. Now, I'm gonna try to say the names, not gonna lie, go on a butcher it, just being honest, because I'm not really good with the name sayings. I'm old, my girls tell me all the time that. So the first one I wanna talk about is at Goldmine Transportation, 1820. He left me a message, well, not a message, a code. It was a code 3661 FMI uh, 6. So if you guys don't know what that is, and that's all you left me, just because I've done this for quite a while, I can tell you right now, this is definitely from a Freightliner truck. Again, I've been doing this a little over 22 years. So the code looks familiar to me. I did look it up on my computer. It ends up being for an injector number three code. When I looked at it, there's more in depth when it comes to code, especially when people ask mechanics over the phone. It's not something that's easy like, oh, replace this. In this instance, there's gonna be a few things with that code. It's for injector number three. And the first thing you would have to do is test out the harness, test out the injector. And at that point, you're gonna, there's gonna be more testing for the technician to determine if it's injector, harness, broken wire, and maybe a computer. That's a little bit more in depth and you need to trust a mechanic that knows what he's doing. All you do is take it to a shop and they're guessing and they think they know what they're doing. It's gonna cost you money. So make sure that you guys find the proper technician that knows what they're doing and it has the proper software. So Freightliner, I would definitely make sure that he has the Detroit program and that he has some basic knowledge of how it works. So that's for that particular one there. Now the next one is Scott Wincombe 6397. He's having an ECM problem and he has a question for me for the injector trim codes so what he wants to do is he wants to replace his ECM on the motor with a new one and he wants to know if he should be putting the trim codes on the new one. So in most shops, the way I would do it is I normally download all the parameters on my computer and then take it off, install the new one, program that ECM to the factory settings and then I have a template from his old one to make the changes as needed, like speed, if he's taking protective cruise off, or idle shutdown. In this case, making sure that the trim codes have moved over from his old one to the new one. So sometimes when we put trim codes, it gets uploaded into the server and it should transfer over. If it doesn't, that's why I make a copy on my computer and verify, and that's gonna be done at the dealership or a shop that knows what he's doing. So if the ECMs get replaced, make sure that they download the old one and then install the new one. I hope that one helps you guys there. Next one, it's a little, I'm not, it's Ultra Hose, I think, TTV. And he says he's having a little issue with his power. Truck won't go fast, then 65, then he gets a check engine light. First day at 35, when he's loaded, goes back home head out and then it hits 60 to 65 and the check engine light comes on again, just won't push over. He found a freight line and he's heading that way, he said in Kentucky. So that's a little hard because it's all I'm getting is the symptoms of what he's having. We definitely would need to hook up the computer to find out what codes are triggering those. So 65 right there off the bat, it could be that's where it might be programmed if he's going over and he's tripping a code saying that he's going over a certain speed, or he could have an injector, something with boost related, maybe after treatment, and it got derated. I'm just not sure without hooking up the computer. That, so my suggestion would be is go to a shop. I try to stay away from you know OEM places, just the fact that they are very expensive. You can go to a mom and pa shop and they should have the programs, save you a little bit of money in that area. You know, a lot of shops do know about Freightliner, but they can help you with that and keep the cost down. We got another one here. It's, uh, I guess, Chico QM2KF. So he wants to know where he can get shocks. That is not gas. When it comes to shocks, you have hydraulic and you have gas, right? So the best thing you wanna do is to avoid all that, you can always go to your dealership. Those, they're gonna wanna sell you their brand and they also will sell the after treatment. Now, if you want, you can always call and say, hey, what's the part number? And then call a truck place that sells parts, give them that part number and they can cross it over to a shock like a Monroe or Gabriel that you may like and tell them that you want hydraulic. So that was what I would recommend to do. Next one, I guess it's at Bay Media 5364. 
So he's saying, uh, what are the problems that would occur if you don't change, that you don't change this and always, and he always gets his service done at a Freightliner. So when he means this, he's meaning the crank case filter. So that's a good question, because I've always had people I've talked to over the years saying that I went to TA, I went to Petro, I went to dealership, I went to a shop, I did my oil change, but the oil change only includes oil filter, fuel filter, most of the time greasing the truck, checking the transmission, checking the differentials. It does not include like topping off your transmission, your differential, your coin, checking the air filter, the cabin filter, the air dryer cartridge, or even your crankcase filter. So that is on your responsibility to remember when it was replaced and then keep log of it. So if you did a crankcase filter last year, then you know you need to do it this year. The dealership's not gonna replace it or a shop unless it's in a check engine light. And if you don't replace it, what could happen is that all of a sudden you'll see a lot of oil spilling out the bottom and you're gonna freak out a little bit. What happens is the filter quits spinning and then the oil dumps right out instead of going back in the crankcase. And then the other thing is if the filter stops spinning as well or slows down, uh, you'll get a, a check engine light for speed and that would be for your crankcase filter. So I would recommend that you replace your crankcase filter once a year, write the date on it and just keep track of it from there. So those are the issues that could happen if you don't change it. And that's what happens when you go to a shop and you think doing the preventive maintenance and includes all that. It does not. You guys gotta say, hey, Check out my air filter, check out my cabin filter, check my air dryer cartridge, and also see how my crankcase filter as well. All right, so those filters, as well as your DEF. If you have DEF, make sure that filter gets changed as well. That's not part of the maintenance. You're gonna have to ask for them to check it and it'll be an additional cost. All right guys, so the last one that I have, which again, butchering the name because I'm not good at this. So it looks like not something, not, not kill him, kill him, might be bad. 6991. He said he just bought a Freightliner, a 2020 Cascadia. His oil pressure states at 40 PSI at cruise control at 70 miles per hour. And then it dips down to 30 PSI around 62. He wants to know that's low, huh? So here's the thing. On the Freightliner at Cascadia's, the oil pressure, once it gets up to temp, temp around 180, 190, it can get at idle as low as 12 PSI. When you are running, it can range anywhere between 30 to 60, depending on, you know, torque capacity, what you're pulling is loading. So there's gonna be a, quite a bit of fluctuation when it comes to oil pressure on the Freightliner Cascadia's with the DD engines, all right? So that's normal for this truck from what I could tell. And if it ever drops below 12 PSI, you will get a check engine light for low oil pressure. If you get that, stop, go to a shop, get it checked out. If you keep running the way it is, you will damage the truck and it will cost you thousands of dollars. Low oil pressure code, if you ever see it drop below 12, go to a shop. Stop what you're doing, head there. That would be my recommendation. We went over the questions Guys, I went over these and a lot of things come to mind when I read these. So for instance, the one for the shocks, I did a video not long ago on shocks, tells you how to replace them. Now for looking for the parts, you can definitely find them at a parts store or you call your dealer, get the part number and see if you can outsource it to get the part a little bit cheaper, especially if you're looking for hydraulic. Then the next one, preventive maintenance. We did a preventive maintenance of which ones and how long and intervals when it comes to filters and so forth on each truck. I have that in the video. You guys can definitely check out. It would be helpful for you guys. And then the last one for the Cascadia with low oil pressure. If you type in low oil pressure on my channel, it will tell you that this is very common for these trucks and what to be looking for when it does get below 12 PSI. I'm here to help and save you guys money. Check out the videos that I have out. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm trying to help you guys to save money. That is the goal. So if you guys like what you saw today, answering these awesome questions, don't forget to pound that like button. Also, anything you have, any other questions you want me to answer on the videos, leave a comment at the bottom. And guys, please don't forget to subscribe. I wanna get this content to you as quickly as possible and make more videos for you. 
to save that money. Good job.